<clears throat> Friends, I'm wearing a hat. I'm wearing my hoodie because it is cold and it is wet and it's been raining. But I managed to be able to paint this large 10 by 15. Yeah, there's another one back there. And I'm excited to show you this one. And this is how I was able to fix a mistake in my art when I painted a vase and then realized I had way too many balloons. They didn't all fit. And I just added a couple more. So no matter what's going on with your art, stick with it. This is a lesson in how to fix something and actually find this to be one of my favorite paintings. So come on, let's go. Let's relax and enjoy and do some painting. All right, friends. So today we are using some Christy Rice brushes. This is her large dagger brush, three quarter inch, and this is her travel brush, which is a number six round. So I'm gonna spray down my palette. I'm using a Winsor Newton paint set. I put this together myself in this lovely little plastic palette. I just love all the vibrant colors. It took me so long to choose. I have Maiden Arts uh, 10 by 15 paper. This is 100% cotton and they're a uh, little water wells as well. So we're going to start by trying to do something kind of like this. I'm using this as my reference today. I'm really excited about this project. We're going to start with this large brush dipping into the water and we're just going to create some fun blooms. Now I've got a variety of pinks and maybe some peach in here. I'm just grabbing some random colors and you could just have a lot of fun with this. You could add some purples too. It's a really lovely bright pink. So what I wanna do is play with some color values as we are painting some beautiful large blooms. So I'm gonna start with, I don't know if I'd call these, you know, little peonies or whatnot. Honestly, I'm gonna dip into here, take off some of that paint, make a little bit of a lighter value. Honestly, I'm not worried about the exact type of flower. Uh, we are just painting loose today take off some of that paint to create some more lighter values once again, and just trying to have fun. Now I'm gonna grab some more of that concentrated pink as I start putting these brush strokes down on the paper. And you can see how pretty that is just to have the contrast of these different colors and the shades, just dropping in wet on wet, some more of that color. So another thing I like to do is to take my small brush and start by putting the center in first. So I'm gonna grab some of this beautiful cadmium yellow color. And I'm gonna wait a little bit while that's drying. I'm gonna add some over here for a nice big bloom. So I'm just gonna do what I would consider a nice little starburst, sunburst, whatever. And then we'll put in our petals after that. I'm gonna do one more. I'm using really concentrated yellow. And I'm going to just, let's see, probably add one over here. So I'm using my original painting you know, as a reference, but I'm going to give myself permission just to change things up here and there as well. So now going back with that larger brush, grabbing whatever paint is on there, and same type of thing, creating these beautiful billowy petals here. So if you're doing flowers that have pretty much just one layer, like we're trying to do today, you like to play with the value. So the lightness and the darkness of a color so that you can really show the personality, the shadow, the interest, the texture in that way. So I'm just gonna make these go a little bit closer to our middle and then more concentrated right here. As you can see, this is just really fun. I'm having a good time with this. So guys, remember I'm all about the self-care. We're gonna work on this one here just remember to take a deep breath, reminding yourself that this is fun and that you are having a good time. I want you guys to love the process. I don't want you guys to think you have to create this gorgeous, beautiful painting. The end result is going to be a certain way. I want you guys to play as you're dipping in, taking off some paint, so making a lighter value. As you're dipping in, making more concentrated values with that concentrated paint, just play around with that. And I'm adding a little bit more in here just for fun. You know, see how you like the results that you get. And it's just about playing. So now I'm going to grab that yellow again. Well, I don't have the yellow. I'm going to add it. And we're going to put in a little bit more of that 
pizzazz with the center. So things are drying a little bit, but some of this is still wet and it's going to bleed and it's gonna give a, just a different look here to your floral. So I'm just extending that out. Just be really easy going, gentle. Don't worry too much about your painting. So now I'm gonna do some pretty orange flowers and you know what? I'm gonna use a smaller brush here. So I'm grabbing this nice medium orange. I also have a very dark red orange on my palette and I can just start, you know, putting in different marks and different petal shapes. So this one, I'm just gonna start putting these nice thin petals and they are curving in towards the center of that flower. So as I'm doing the brush strokes and I'm painting them, I just remembering that everything is going back to that center right here. And if I have too much of a darkness, I can just take my brush, uh, dab it, clean it and dab it on a piece of paper towel and lift some color just to create some of that contrast for this flower. All right, so we're gonna do more concentrated orange and I'm gonna do one just over here, just adding that in. My cat obviously wants to be a part of this, so she's going to make her kitty noises and you might hear her. Animals are fun. So, you know, you can't control all the things and that's okay. I won't try to, cause she's a, has a mind of her own, if you can imagine. So let's see, we'll do, let's do another one just right about here. And this one's gonna be, you know, facing upward. And so this part right here, will have a nice little green part and that's where the stem will connect down. So we're just gonna do another couple petals and you've got some light values and you've got some dark ones. So when I'm doing my composition, I'm just very aware of the types of strokes I'm putting down and trying to make sure that I've got good contrast. I think I'd like to do some, let's see, let's just do some purple now. So I've got two different purples here. This one is really bright and intense and this one is a bit more subdued. And if you mix those together, you know, kind of getting a little combination of those two. So I want to do some kind of like some roses. So I'm going to take more concentrated for the center. And what I'm going to do is just do some little kind of sketchy lines with the tip of my paintbrush, leaving white space, starting to press down in some areas and to create a bit more of that thicker petal Then I'm going to grab, you know, a little bit of water, wipe off the side, and we're gonna start pressing a little bit more and really start to add in some of those wonky, thicker petals for, you know, we can call this a rose, or maybe it's more like a ranunculus, which has a lot of those beautiful petals, just like a rose does. So let's do that a couple more times. We'll put another one right here, a little off-centered from this one, and a little sketchy sketchy, pressing down a little bit more. I need a little bit more concentrated. So I'm just gonna go around it again, by taking off some of that water and just really you know, enjoying the process of putting those marks down, taking off some of the water, taking off some of the paint. That's what I meant. So guys, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Remember that I do teach on several places on Skillshare and if you haven't, heard of it, as I am taking a clean damp brush and taking off some of this paint. Um, you can get 30 days free linked below and it's where I have my courses. <laughs> the cat is talking. And it's on the two courses I have so far on loose watercolor florals, on how to let go of perfectionism in your art, and also how to relax and find joy as you're painting loose florals. So you can check those out. I also paint and teach on Patreon. And that's a membership that starts at $3 a month and goes up from there. So if you're interested, feel free to click on one or both of those links in the description. And we have so much fun on both of those places. All right, taking off some paint here and just being really loose with these guys. You know, these are pretty simple. I'm not overthinking them. These are all just supposed to be kind of simple little florals that feel kind of effortless. We don't want them to feel complicated. So let me see, I'm going to grab some of this bright red color and make sure that I have enough on my palette, mixing in some water so it's not too intense. And I'm going to use this tiny little brush 
and just use the shape of the brush, pressing down, kind of like that, to create, as we're going upward, a little bit of a spray of florals that we can connect with the stem. And they're so easy because you're using the tip of the brush or the base of the brush, the belly, to create those shapes. Um, they kind of look like hearts, so there's that. I know we have a Valentine's holiday happening soon, and so it's kind of perfect for that. Not that this is the intention of the video, but this could make an amazing Valentine's card or many different Valentine's cards that you could cut up and, you know, give away to several people. All right, let's just do a few over here. So when you're doing your loose florals, it's so important to just relax your hand and not get so intense in the painting when you really stress out and you're gripping your brush, you're tensing everything up and it's really making it difficult just to relax into the whole process and enjoy. So I'm grabbing this really nice concentrated paint right here. I'm going to do some more little florals here, side facing. And um, so just take off some paint and we'll add in just a little bit more of these little petals. And we're gonna connect, of course, everything with some stems as well. So that's really gonna work out well for us to connect everything and start to make things look a little more realistic. So I'm looking at my painting, trying to balance out and see, okay, where do I need to add more color, more shape? And so you can do a simple little side facing like that. I'm gonna add one right here too, just because I'm trying to balance out the shapes the values, and we're gonna grab a little bit more of this, although it's not gonna be that much darker. The shapes, the values, and then the sizes are really important to vary also. And I think I'm gonna hide a little one over here too, like a little bud. So don't forget your greens because we're gonna go there next. So cleaning my brush, I'm gonna grab some of my green and I'm just going to switch up my palette. So now I've got the greens on this side. And I've got a variety. I do love my sap green the most. So just grabbing some of that. And you're simply just connecting things. So for example, these little heart-shaped florals, you're just going to create that main stem, holding it very loose so, you know, it's gonna be a little wonky. And I wanna tell you guys a little bit of a story because this composition is a bit of a mistake. And not this particular one, but the original that you know, I showed you, um, I created this with, you know, just good intentions and I was just trying to relax and self-care and not paying too much attention. But the only problem is that I did not account for how large of a spray of florals I made. And so when I put in the vase, I realized there were flowers outside the vase and I was like, what am I going to do? So I ended up fixing my said mistake by adding in two more vases. And it became one of my most favorite paintings. And it seems like it has been one of your most favorite paintings as well on social media. And so I was like, let me make a tutorial because this was just a fun little happy accident as Bob Ross used to say. And you know, those things happen and encourage yourself when they do, it's, it's exciting, you know? Okay, so we're just literally doing these sketchy marks here creating our stem and just kind of flowing with that. And as you're doing this, I want to check in with you and I want you to ask yourself, how are you feeling? Are you feeling relaxed and, you know, enjoying this? If not, something to consider um, taking a breath, you know, reminding yourself you're trying to enjoy that process and it's not about stressing out about the end result. I'm going to add in some leaves. So just watering this down a little bit, just, you know, creating some really nice sketchy marks for leaves. I like to be pretty gentle and easy going with this, but having a leaf connecting to, you know, somewhere on the floral or, you know, where it makes sense, but it doesn't have to make sense, guys. This is your art, this is your painting, you know, enjoy that. So I just like to kind of scrub the brush along and you can leave a little stem if you'd like and kind of just go from there. So wherever you feel like some greenery would be a good idea, can also just like press down at the belly like that to create some very simple leaf marks and those can be really beautiful and pretty and easy. I want you guys to be able to paint 
and feel like there is a nice ease to the painting process. So maybe just connecting some more stems here and there. So for the first vase, I'm going to start with my beautiful, lovely aqua color. It's very, very concentrated at this point. And we're just going to kind of go in the middle here. It's going to be more of like a rounded squarish part, uh, a vase. And I've got some hairs there. All right, so I'm just going to sketch in. And I like to do little sketchy lines, not really, you know, committing to a very harsh line. And because it's really sketchy, uh, the way that I do this is very, very loose. And so I'm not worried about straight lines. This is supposed to be really fun and easy going. So I'm cleaning the brush, dabbing the brush, and I'm just literally going to start spreading out some of that paint, creating some marks. And let's add a little bit more water here, just for fun. Like I said, loosey goosey, easy going. We can even put in some stems. Once that's dried a little bit more, we're gonna do that, I'm just saying. All right, now I'm grabbing a really dark blue color. Let's see if that's good. Nice kind of a navy color. I do have a navy here, even darker. So very similar, very concentrated. So I'm going to do another base right over here. So we've got these three sections of florals that we're just adding stuff in as we go. So I want these to all be unique. It's a little bit rounded here. And just coming back up right over here. Again, a little bit wider at the bottom. Then curving up to just a little bit of a rounded vase. Now I'm cleaning my brush, again dabbing just to control for excess water. And I'm just helping to spread out some of that paint. A little sketchy look, kind of going around there. And again, we're gonna have some stems. So, you know, not too worried about what that looks like right there. And then for my third vase, I'm just gonna grab some of this purple and we'll do a little skinny vase right here. Just sketching. Remember, these are just whimsical, sketchy vases. We're not thinking hard about them, but we are enjoying the process of making them, I hope. So I'm gonna grab now a little bit of this kind of watery blue for shadows. Just some shadowing and we'll start here because that one's more dry. It's a little bit dark, so you can remove paint. Grab a, a damp, clean brush, remove some of that paint. I'm actually okay with having that color. It's not very dark. I do want to darken up there, this shadow. It's kind of behind it and adding that in. We're gonna do the same thing for over here, just a little bit and then some more shadow here. So these are not overthought. They're easygoing, loose and whimsical and fun, you guys. I hope that you are enjoying this. We're gonna pop in a little bit more color, grabbing some of that darker blue and then especially popping it in right behind where that shadow would be darker. You know, we're assuming, we're imagining and then just kind of calling it a day with that and leaving it, leaving that but I am gonna take the clean damp brush and I am going to just blend a little bit of that color, you know, for fun, cause why not? And that'll be, you know, fun. You can do some dry brushing too. And so now that you've got your vases in, you wanna survey your painting and say, okay, does everything make sense where they're at? Do I need to add some more stems in there? And I'm gonna just do that right here. I'm just gonna bring some stems in and connect things together. And if you're getting some bleeding because there's wetness, that's okay. Remember, watercolor does that. That's one of the pretty things about watercolor. And so we're just gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna grab maybe some nice long brush strokes just to fill in your vase so it looks like, you know, things are placed where they're supposed to be. I do like to cover up a lot of the white space with, with my bouquets just so that everything you know, has a nice, like kind of tight feel. Um, but if you like to leave a lot of white space, you can do that as well. Remember this is loose, easy going, grabbing some more of that paint and you can just, you know, press down, fill in some of those spaces. All right, on to the next part here. It's a little bit more greenery. And we're gonna do some stems that are just, you know, pointing in different directions, okay? And over here, don't forget those. I think that it just makes the vases 
and the composition more pretty. Don't want to forget those details. All right, so a little bit more of some greenery. And, you know, you really just want to have fun with this. I, I don't think I need to add too much more. We want to keep it simple. I do want to add a little bit of a layer, though, with these roses. So I'm going to grab some really concentrated purple. Now, this is not necessary, but I do want to add a little flare. So I like to add some shadow right here where there would be some on the outside of that white space where the next petal is starting. I like to add in just a little bit of pizzazz and I'm just pressing down and just kind of moving the brush around and being very loose. I'm not trying to overthink it because then it's just going to be overworked and I'm going to think, okay, goodness, like, did I get that mark right? But the whole point is like, enjoy trying new things and the brush strokes that you create, you know, are you able to create a painting that is unique, not only to you and to your style, but does it make you happy? Does it make you delight when you look at that painting and say, my goodness, I'm proud I did that. I've learned, you know, I've learned a lot through this process. So these little strokes are a little bit um, short and I wanted to just blend them out. So again, clean damp brush, kind of blend them in until they look how you'd like them to look. All right, and if you want to add anything else at this point, I'm simply going to add a little bit more yellow. I've got some dark on here, that's okay. Just to the centers here. And I think I'm gonna call it a day. But if you wanted to, you can add more layers to all the flowers and really bring out more dimension. Um, sometimes we like to keep it simple and sometimes we like to make it a little fancy. Alrighty, friends, I really hope that you enjoyed painting this. Um, I love painting with you. If you have questions, let me know. I hope to be there for you guys and to not only teach you how to do watercolor techniques that are simple, that are fun, that help you enjoy the whole process, but just help you to find that happiness, the self-care, and that you are able to feel like you are learning and growing in your journey and being more calm and more content with life. I want to remind you that I am doing the one-on-one -on -one sessions right now. The link is below if you're interested in taking a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute or 60 minute session online with me. So if you have questions, you can always leave a comment below and let me know or sign up. I'll see you guys soon in the next video. Bye.